Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds is the debut album by Jeff Wayne, retelling the story of The War of the Worlds by H. G. Wells. It was released in the UK on 9 June 1978. A concept album and a rock opera, its main format is progressive rock and string orchestra, using narration and leitmotifs to carry the story and rhyming melodic lyrics that express the feelings of the various characters. The two-disc album remains a bestseller, having sold 15 million copies worldwide. In 2018, it was named the 32nd best-selling studio album of all time in the UK. It has spawned multiple versions including video games, DVDs, and live tours. Topic. Plot summary The album consists of two discs, which correspond roughly to the two books of Wells' novel. Topic. Part 1 – The Coming of the Martians In a prologue, the journalist notes that in the late 19th century few people had even considered the possible existence of extraterrestrial life, and yet, planet Earth had in fact long been enviously observed by advanced beings. The journalist's account begins with the sighting of several bursts of green gas which, for ten consecutive nights, erupt from the surface of Mars and appear to approach Earth. Ogilvy, an astronomer convinced that no life could exist on Mars, assures the journalist there is no danger. Eventually something crashes onto Horsell Common, and in the resulting crater Ogilvy discovers a glowing cylinder, the top of which begins to unscrew. When this lid falls off, a Martian creature emerges. By now a crowd has gathered on the common, and when a group of inquisitive men approach the cylinder they are incinerated by the heat ray. An advanced Martian weapon. The journalist flees with the crowd. Later, hammering sounds are heard from the pit. A company of soldiers is deployed at the common, and that evening an injured and exhausted artilleryman wanders into the journalist's house and tells him his comrades have been killed by fighting machines. Tripod vehicles built and controlled by Martians, each armed with its own heat ray. They set off for London. The journalist to ensure his lover Carrie is safe, the artilleryman to report to headquarters, but are soon caught in crossfire between soldiers and Martians and separated. Three days later the journalist arrives at Carrie's house but finds it empty. He resolves to escape London by boat and later catches sight of Carrie aboard a steamer, but the gangplank is raised before he can join her. Fighting machines then approach, threatening the steamer, but they are engaged by the Royal Navy battleship Thunder Child and two are destroyed. The steamer escapes, but Thunder Child and her crew are melted by heat rays, leaving England defenseless against the invasion. Topic. Part 2 – The Earth Under the Martians The wandering journalist discovers that red weed, the vegetation that gives Mars its color, has taken root on Earth and spread rapidly across the landscape. In a churchyard he encounters the parson Nathaniel and his wife Beth. The trio take refuge in a nearby cottage that is soon surrounded by black smoke, a Martian chemical weapon. Nathaniel, driven mad by his experiences, blames himself for the invasion and believes the invaders are demons arising from human evil. As Beth attempts to restore his faith in humanity, a Martian cylinder crashes into the cottage and she is buried under the rubble. The newly arrived Martians construct a handling machine, a squat, spider-like vehicle used to capture and collect humans. After nine days hiding in the ruins, the journalist and Nathaniel see the Martians eating, harvesting human blood and injecting it into their own veins. 
Nathaniel resolves to confront the demons, believing that he has been chosen to destroy them with his prayers and holy cross. The journalist knocks him unconscious to silence his ravings, but the Martians are already alerted. A mechanical claw explores the cottage and drags Nathaniel away. Eventually the Martians abandon their camp and the journalist continues his journey to London. He again encounters the artilleryman, who is planning a subterranean utopia that would allow humans to evade the Martians and ultimately strike back with reverse-engineered fighting machines. The journalist, however, realizing the artilleryman's ambitions far exceed his abilities, soon leaves. Upon reaching London he finds it desolate and empty. Driven to suicide by intense despair and loneliness, he surrenders to a fighting machine but realizes it is inert, the Martian inside dead. In his epilogue, the journalist reports that the Martians were defeated by Earth's bacteria, to which they had no resistance, and that, as humanity recovered from the invasion, he was reunited with Kerry. But, he says, the question remains, is Earth now safe, or are the Martians learning from their failures and preparing a second invasion? In a second epilogue set in the near future, a NASA mission to Mars flounders when the control center loses contact with the craft. The controller sees a green flare erupt from Mars's surface. The controller tries to contact NASA, but all communication seems to have been blocked. This leaves a question mark of what's going to happen and the fate of Earth. Topic. Differences from Wells' novel The Journalist is an amalgam of two of Wells' characters, a writer of speculative philosophy who narrates much of the book and his younger brother who is a medical student who narrates the Thunder Child section. The journalist's girlfriend Carrie does not exist in the novel, where the narrator has an unnamed wife. In the novel, the handling machine is not as big, is used for construction and does not have a basket for collecting humans. Instead the fighting machines collect humans for consumption. In the novel, the Martians have at least one flying machine and also an autonomous digging machine. Neither are mentioned in the album. Parson Nathaniel in the novel is simply called the curate. There is no mention of a wife. Topic Cast Topic Performers Topic Album Richard Burton Spoken Words The Journalist The Narrator Protagonist Justin Hayward, vocals, the sung thoughts of the journalist. David Essex, spoken words and vocals, the artilleryman. Chris Thompson, vocals, the voice of humanity. Phil Linnett, spoken words and vocals, Parson Nathaniel. Julie Covington, spoken words and vocals, Beth. Jerry Wayne, spoken words, the voice of NASA. Topic. Tours Richard Burton, Spoken Words, The Journalist, via Virtual Richard Burton, a large bust of the journalist plus a projected image. Liam Neeson, Spoken Words, The Journalist, The New Generation 2012, 2014, and the Dominion Theatre Stage Production 2016. Justin Hayward, Vocals, The Sung Thoughts of the Journalist, All Tours, 2006, 2007 Australian, 2007 UK, 2009 30th Anniversary, and 2010 Tour. Michael Prade, Vocals, The Sung Thoughts of the Journalist, Dominion Theatre 2016. 
Alexis James, Spoken Words and Vocals, The Artilleryman, 2006, 2007 UK, and 2009 30th Anniversary Tour. Michael Falzen, Spoken Words and Vocals, The Artilleryman, 2007 Australian Tour. Jason Donovan, Spoken Words and Vocals, The Artilleryman, 2010 Tour. Chris Thompson, Vocals, The Voice of Humanity, All Tours, 2006, 2007 Australian, 2007 UK, 2009 30th Anniversary, and 2010 Tour. Russell Watson, Spoken Words and Vocals, Parson Nathaniel, 2006 Tour. Shannon Knoll, Spoken Words and Vocals, Parson Nathaniel, 2007 Australian and first half of 2009 30th Anniversary Tour. John Payne, Spoken Words and Vocals, Parson Nathaniel, 2007 UK Tour. Damian Edwards, Spoken Words and Vocals, Parson Nathaniel, second half of 2009 30th Anniversary Tour. Rita and Roberts, Spoken Words and Vocals, Parson Nathaniel, 2010 Tour. Tara Blaze, Spoken Words and Vocals, Beth, 2006 Tour. Rachel Beck, Spoken Words and Vocals, Beth, 2007 Australian Tour. Sinead Quinn, Spoken Words and Vocals, Beth, 2007 UK Tour. Jennifer Ellison, Spoken Words and Vocals, Beth, 2009 30th Anniversary Tour. Liz McLarnon, Spoken Words and Vocals, Beth, 2010 Tour. Carrie Hope Fletcher, Spoken Words and Vocals, Beth, 2014 and 2018 40th Anniversary Tour. Callum O'Neill, Spoken Words, H.G. Wells, 2014 Tour. Daniel Boys, Spoken Words and Vocals, Male Understudy, All Tours, 2006, 2007 Australian, 2007 UK, 2009 30th Anniversary, and 2010 Tour. Jonathan Vickers, Spoken Words and Vocals, NASA Controller, 2014 and 2018 40th Anniversary Tour. Lily Osborne, Female Understudy. Topic. Black Smoke Band Topic. Album Jeff Wayne, Composer, Arranger, Keyboards, Synthesizers Chris Spedding, Electric Guitar, Acoustic Guitar Herbie Flowers, Bass Guitar Ken Freeman, Keyboards, Synthesizers George Fenton, Santor, Zither, Tar Joe Partridge, Guitars, The Heat Ray, Mandolin, Vocals, Olas Barry Morgan, Drums Barry Da Souza, Roy Jones, Ray Cooper, Percussion Paul Vigras, Gary Osborne, Billy Laurie, Backing Vocals Topic. Tours Jeff Wayne, Composer, Conductor Chris Spedding, Electric Guitar, Acoustic Guitar Herbie Flowers, Bass Guitar Hugh Davies, Electric Guitar Gaten Schurer, Tar, Keyboards Tom Woodstock, Guitars, Keyboards, Backing Vocals Lori Wisefield, Guitars, Mandolin, Autoharp, Tar ACCY Yates, Drums Gordy Marshall, Drums Julia Thornton, Percussion, Harp, Keyboards Steve Turner, Keyboards Neil Angeli, Keyboards Kennedy Aitchison, Keyboards Topic. String Orchestra <laughs> Topic. Album Little Chap Strings
Topic Tours Ulladubula Topic About the album Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds was created by composer Jeff Wayne based on the 1898 novel by H. G. Wells. It features Academy Award-nominated actor Richard Burton, Justin Hayward of the Moody Blues, Chris Thompson of Manfred Mann's Earth Band, Phil Linnett of Thin Lizzy, Julie Covington of Evita and Rock Follies, and David Essex of Vita, The China Plates. Wayne conducts what would come to be known as the Black Smoke Band and the Ulladubula String Orchestra. Forever Autumn was a UK top five single, sung by Hayward. In Canada, it only managed to reach number 73 and fared only slightly better in the US, peaking at number 47. The album itself spent 290 weeks in the UK album charts. It was in the top 10 in 22 countries and reached number 1 in 11 countries. In Canada, the album reached just number 76. The album was one of the first recorded on 48 tracks, using two synchronized 24-track Studer A80s at AdVision Studios in London. It was engineered by Jeff Young, who brought the recordings together with only a 16-track desk. He later worked with George Michael to record Last Christmas and Careless Whisper using the same studio and equipment. The repetition of Ulla, the cry made by the Martians, and certain musical refrains throughout the musical act as leitmotifs. The official album comes with several paintings by Peter Goodfellow, Jeff Taylor and Michael Trim that illustrate the story. Topic Other versions of the album To promote the 1978 release, an abridged album containing radio edits was distributed to radio stations. Special intros and endings had to be added to certain tracks because they simply were not written with radio in mind. The Air Play album turned out so well that in 1981 CBS decided to release it commercially under the title Highlights from Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds. Two Spanish versions of the album were released in 1978, one featuring Anthony Quinn in the role of the journalist, and the other for Spain featuring Teofilo Martinez in the same role. A version in Dutch was recorded for Radio Veronica in the Netherlands, but never released as an album. A German version was released in 1980 with Kurt Jurgens taking the part of the journalist. A 1989 version of The Eve of the War remixed by Ben Liebrand reached number three in the UK singles chart. A 1995 edition of the album featured additional remixes of some tracks and additional conceptual art. Australian progressive metal band Alchemist released a version of Eve of the War on a 1998 EP. In 2000, a collection of remixes of tracks from the original album, including several used in the 1998 computer game, were released on a double CD titled The War of the Worlds, Ulladubula, the remix album. While most of the contributors are relatively unknown, the album includes two versions of a remix of Dead London by Apollo 440 and other remixes by house music pioneer Todd Terry. On 23 June 2005 the original album was re-released in two forms, one in a remastered two-disc hybrid multi-channel Super Audio CD set, another in a seven-disc collector's edition featuring additional remixes, outtakes, the actors reading from the unabridged script, excerpts from the Anthony Quinn and Kurt Jurgens performances as the reporter, as well as a seventh disc being a DVD showing the making of the album, produced by Phoenix Film and Television Productions. 
While the original Ulladubbala album had a limited run and went out of print, following the success of the 2005 re-release of the original album, Ulladubbala 2 was released on 17 April 2006. This single CD release was largely made of tracks from the original remix album, with some additional new remixes by Tom Middleton and DJ Keltek, and hip-hop versions of two tracks by DJ Zoob. Middleton's remixes of The Eve of the War were also released on CD and vinyl. Topic: Beyond the Album. Topic: Video Games. In 1984 CRL Group PLC released Jeff Wayne's video game version of The War of the Worlds for the Sinclair ZX Spectrum home computer. It was also released in Germany as Jeff Wayne's video version von der Krieg der Welten. In 1998, a real-time strategy game, Jeff Wayne's The War of the Worlds, was created by Rage Software and released for the personal computer. Jeff Wayne himself produced the musical arrangements for the game, consisting of 45 minutes of material re-scored and remixed in a newer electronica style with techno beats. The game's artwork was based on the Michael Trim, Jeff Taylor and Peter Goodfellow illustrations found throughout the original album booklet, and some of Richard Burton's dialogue as the journalist is used in the opening and closing scenes. In 1999, a third-person shooter, also entitled Jeff Wayne's The War of the Worlds, was developed by Pixelogic and released for the Sony PlayStation. It used much of the 1998 game's music and graphical elements, but featured an entirely different campaign with a focus on vehicular combat. Topic. Animated version In late 2004 the Ulladubbala 2 production had been commissioned for an animated CGI film version. Test footage of some Martian machines was released, but the film itself never materialized. Topic. Tours A live tour, based on the album, began in the UK and Ireland in April 2006. Jeff Wayne returned to conduct the 48-piece Ulladubbala Strings and 10-piece Black Smoke Band. A. Virtual. Richard Burton, a large bust of the journalist onto which was projected an image of a young Burton with a superimposed actor's mouth and jaw lip synced to the original Burton recordings performed as the journalist. Justin Hayward reprised his original role as the sung thoughts of the journalist and Chris Thompson returned as the voice of humanity. Also from the original recording were Chris Spedding playing lead guitar and Herbie Flowers on bass guitar. Other guest artists who appeared were the People's Tenor. Russell Watson as Parson Nathaniel, Alexis James as the Artilleryman, and Tara Blaze as Beth. Daniel Boyce, known from BBC's Any Dream Will Do, was understudy for all the roles sung by male artists. A model fighting machine featured on stage. A short animated prequel to the story was also presented in the style of the upcoming feature-length film detailing the Martians' ecological destruction of their own world which was originally made for the 1998 computer game and their preparations to invade Earth, and including a short remix of The Red Weed. The show was produced by Ray Jones, Damien Collier and Jeff Wayne. The live show toured Australia and New Zealand in 2007, with dates in Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Brisbane and Auckland. 
The Australian tour featured Australian Idol runner-up Shannon Knoll as Parson Nathaniel, actress Rachel Beck as Beth and Michael Falzon as the artilleryman, alongside Justin Hayward and Chris Thompson from the original cast with Chris Spedding and Herbie Flowers in the band. A further UK live tour took place in December 2007 with Justin Hayward, Chris Thompson, Alexis James, John Payne as Parson, and Sinead Quinn as Beth. 2008 marked the 30th anniversary of the original album release and a number of events took place, including a 30th anniversary tour, which started on 7 June 2009 in Dublin. The 30th anniversary saw Justin Hayward, Alexis James and Chris Thompson reprise their respective roles, with Shannon Knoll taking the role of Parson Nathaniel and Jennifer Ellison as Beth. When Knoll had to leave the show halfway through its 2009 tour, the role of Parson Nathaniel went to Damian Edwards, who completed the run. The virtual Richard Burton was also improved, the whole face was animated an actor was found with a similar facial structure, all of Burton's narrative parts were mined, and his face was superimposed onto the face of the actor. In November 2009, Wayne announced on his website dates for another tour in the UK, Ireland, Germany, and the Netherlands, and for the first time, Belgium, in late 2010 early 2011. Justin Hayward and Chris Thompson reprised their roles as the sung thoughts of the journalist and the voice of humanity respectively, with Rita and Roberts as Parson Nathaniel, Jason Donovan as the artilleryman and Liz McLarnon as Beth. Topic. DVD A two-disc Region 2 DVD of the 2006 Wembley Arena, London show was released 6 November 2006 by Universal. Disc 1 contains the live show and Disc 2 contains extras and a documentary of the making of the live show. It is titled Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds, Live on Stage. Topic. The New Generation In 2011 after a short hiatus from touring, Jeff Wayne announced a new musical version of the War of the Worlds album to be released in June 2012 entitled The New Generation. The release date was later pushed back to November, due to problems with scheduling recordings with guest artists. With the album's release, the new generation would also cross Europe on a major arena tour. Wayne explained that the idea was to return to the original album and explore H. G. Wells' characters in more detail, as well as develop the love story between the story's main character, George Herbert, and his fiancée Carrie. Wayne also explained that it would allow him to reinterpret his compositions with the new production techniques of today. Along with the new album would come a new voice of the journalist, originally played by Richard Burton in the 1978 album. The role would now be played by Irish actor Liam Neeson, appearing in 3D holography on stage for the arena tour. On 1 March 2012, Kaiser Chiefs frontman Ricky Wilson was announced as the artilleryman for both the album release and the tour version, while Carrie Ellis would play Beth for the arena tour only. Later, Marty Pello was added to the tour cast and announced as the voice of humanity and it was confirmed that Jason Donovan would return to the production but as Parson Nathaniel rather than the artilleryman, which he played on the previous tour. Later it was announced that Marty Pello had switched roles to the sung thought of the journalist, Jet Black's lead singer and guitarist Will Stapleton would take his place as the voice of humanity. Two new characters were also introduced for the prologue, William Michael Falzen and Vera Lily Osborne. Both Wayne and Neeson were interviewed at the album's press conference where a clip of Neeson playing the journalist was shown. 
It was explained that Neeson would appear on stage as journalist George Herbert in three ways, first as an 11-foot holographic head and shoulders much like the Richard Burton image on the 2009 tour. Second, as a full-body hologram, interacting with live performers on stage without actually being present during the show. And third, Neeson would appear in the two-hour CGI film displayed on a 100-foot animation wall played throughout the show. Jeff Wayne would conduct the Ulladubla Strings and Black Smoke Band as he had done in the tours before. In mid-September, the cast for the new album was released casting Ricky Wilson as the artilleryman, Joss Stone as Beth, Alex Clare as the voice of humanity, Maverick Sabre as Parson Nathaniel, and Take That singer Gary Barlow as the sung thoughts of the journalist, as well as Neeson as the voice of the journalist. The release date for the New Generation album was set to be 12 November 2012 but moved to 26 November to coincide with the Arena Tour. In February 2016, the stage show opened at the Dominion Theatre in London's West End and ran until 30 April 2016. Topic. Jeff Wayne's The War of the Worlds, the musical drama On 15 October 2018 it was announced on the Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds official Twitter page and on the official website that after over a year in work, a brand new production of Jeff Wayne's The War of the Worlds, the musical drama will be available on audible.com on 29 November 2018. This is a brand new five-hour Audible original production based upon Jeff's musical version and H.G. Wells' dark Victorian tale featuring new story and musical content. It will feature an all-star cast including Michael Sheen as the journalist, Taryn Egerton as the artilleryman, Aide Edmondson as Ogilvy, Theo James as Parson Nathaniel, with Anna Marie Wayne as Carrie, the Parson's wife. Topic. Track listing Topic. LP and tape All dialogue written by Doreen and Jerry Wayne, based upon H.G. Wells's original text. All tracks written by Jeff Wayne, except where noted. Topic. Compact disc Same as LP, reorganized as a double CD. Original CD release date 1985. All tracks written by Jeff Wayne, except where noted. Topic. Seven disc box set Discs 1 and 2 of this set are hybrid SACDs and include a 5.1 channel mix, they are identical to the standalone 2 disc SACD edition. All tracks written by Jeff Wayne, except where noted, Disc 7, Deconstructing the War of the Worlds DVD documentary This DVD accompanies Jeff Wayne in the memories of the intensive work while making the original album, featuring footage and an abundance of information about the participating crew and the workflow behind the album. Topic iTunes, SACD version When bought through iTunes or on the 2005 5.1 channel SACD version, the track layout is slightly different. All tracks written by Jeff Wayne, except where noted. Topic. Charts Topic. Reception 
C. Ben Ostrander reviewed the musical version of The War of the Worlds in The Space Gamer No. 18. Ostrander commented that this is a magnificent two-record LP narrated by Richard Burton. Although not quite the same as Wells wrote it, WOTW is a kind of rock, radio play with modern interpretations. Included as a 16-page booklet with words, credits, and some great art work. Said to be two and a half years in the making, WOTW is better than most crap on TV, and makes for a fun evening around the stereo. Topic. See also List of best-selling albums in New Zealand